Anything surprise you about this team uh, during a camp and preseason? Uh, anything oh. stand out that you didn't expect? Or? Well, I mean, I feel like guys, there's a lot of guys now that can score. So it's been a good challenge for us as a goalie in the practice. And, um, um, you know, at the same time, the defensive play is pretty good. So um, uh, just like I said, We'll, we'll go out there tomorrow and, uh, you know, just got to be ready when the puck drops and uh, hopefully we'll score a couple more goals in New Jersey. For you personally, actually, last season didn't end the way you wanted it to. How did you feel uh, in camp and preseason? How eager are you to get off uh, on a different note? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, not happy at the end there last year, but uh, it's a new season, you know, new start. So uh, there is no magic, really. It's just uh, hard work in the summer and uh, it's just, you know, uh, Got to enjoy the game same time too. Who's, you talk about all the different personalities in the room. Getting to know these other two goalies, what have they been like? What's it been like working with them? I mean, they're both smart, really smart guys, and uh, you know they work hard. Um, they're like I said, great guys, great partners. So uh, I think we're all all like pushing each other to be a better goalie. Second year with Westy too. What's it been like working with him, and what's been the difference this year compared to last year? Well, I guess I guess it's both both sides, like knowing knowing the person a little better, and uh, you know how everything works, and what he thinks, and what he wants us to do. And um, uh, I think we're in a great great spot right now, and uh, we can still I can be better, and uh, he can he can get me better, and he can be better as well. So um, it's uh, it's a good. I like him a lot, and he's a great great coach. Billy, you just mentioned your off season work. I'm wondering if that was any different for you this year, just knowing that you're likely gonna. It'd be expected to put up the same workload that you did last season when that was your first year actually doing that. So did that change the way you prepped during the off season? I mean, yeah, for sure. It was a uh, you know first time staying here in uh, in the states over the summer, and um, we we had a we have a good strength strength coach Rob, and uh, you know uh, he uh, he made a good program, and you know just for everything that goalie goalie needs really like you know growing hips all that like uh so we we did focus for that a little bit but not nothing like you know it's still the same training like on the ice off the ice a little maybe new moves but nothing like uh crazy different but uh it, like i said it was great summer here it's a good setup for us here and uh you know i, I really enjoy being here you mentioned uh, the teammates uh, more challenging in practice with the Scores. I'm curious, Spong, this shot, uh, we've seen it in games, but in, in practices, it's a like facing that shot. Yeah, I mean, it's still, you know, it's hard to read. Uh, it's a quick quick release, and he can shoot anywhere, pretty much. You don't have a one certain spot where he can shoot. So uh, he, he'll switch it up, and, um, yeah, he kind of, you know, he looks like a uh, witchkin out there sometimes, so... Uh, he, he's, uh, he's, he has a great shot, and uh, he's, uh, like I said, one of those guys that challenges us in the practice a lot. You, got, you guys got off to a, a good start last year. How much does that kind of help relieve some of the pressure early on when you're not kind of battling uphill right from the start? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's still new season, you know. Um, it doesn't matter what happened last year. No, it's new season, uh, new game, so, uh, but... I think last year it's a it's a good thing that we got a good start and it's uh, you know we gotta we, we want to have the same same start than last year and uh, finish it strong all the way. Thanks, Thanks Thank Thank you. You. I don't know how much you talked about it a little bit the other day, Derek. But just is there a certain type of excitement level or different type of preparation for game number one? Yes, it's a reality. So much emotion goes into that game. If you win, if you lose, even though it's 82, if you you know you flip that game out to game 41, it's a whole lot different. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's probably been sports forever. So we're no different. We're anxious about it. I love the fact we're playing a Stanley Cup contender, a team that's really on the rise, and and they are good. Um, just watching them back and prep. That's a really good hockey team. Um, so it's a good challenge for us. Are they as deep as anybody in the East? <laughs> it's just deep. It's just the way the, the, the pace in which they play in. Um, when you saw last year, we, we beat them at home. Excuse me, we beat them on the road early last year. And then they beat us next few times. with that game here, they just they overwhelmed us with pace. Um, so that's going to be on us to get our game uh, in order. You've kind of talked about the reality of, you know, where you are in the playoff prediction picture. But 
what does a successful season look like for you? Like, how will you judge as yeah, you go along? Yeah, well, I probably we we're, were two thirds of last year. We just we want to push for it. We want to be in the fight. Uh, we want those meaningful games late, which we flirted with a little bit. You know, three quarters of the season and probably get that next step. Uh, what does that look like? I don't know. Um, you know, you kind of kick yourself some a little last year and that, that magic number was 92, somewhere around there, where the previous year it was 100. And with this division, obviously, we'll be beating up on each other. Um, so, you know, you're hoping, you know, that's within reach and a goal as late as possible. Um, and it's gonna be on us. I just, I, I know I've gotten the question you know, I'll get, you'll probably get it Saturday when we play Tampa. Do you see a team like that regressing, coming back? I don't. It's it's going to be on us catching them more than those elite six, seven, eight teams coming back to us. How much of a, I don't know if luxury is the right word, but just uh, instilling confidence and having three goalies that you're unlikely to have to deal with the, what you had to deal with last year with trying to find a, a third guy yeah. out of somewhere and... Well, I just think that's a luxury of that depth, and it burnt us a little bit last year. One on overplaying uh, Villy uh, the way we had to, you know, you know, just the push we were talking about. We just kept going back to him, back to him. He was playing three and fours. He's played five games in a week, one week, because it gave us our best chance to win. I'm very comfortable with all three, um, and that depth there. So we had some injury last year, and our, our goalies in that two and three role just going through some different things in their game. So as much as we've addressed the depth uh, in the other positions, we also did goal. Do you know if they'll go 12 and 6 or 11 and 7? Still on the side on that, because it's a really hard decision. Whoever's not in tomorrow, whether a forward, whether one of the D, probably doesn't warrant being out, um, but we'd rather have these problems than the other end of it, not having enough players or players that we think are quality NHLers in the lineup. So. Probably be right up, maybe a post practice decision. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get a skate tomorrow in New Jersey. How much is that special team? Kind of yep, big part of it. That's a big part, of it, especially early on. Uh, it's just unique in that you're able to prepare so much in your special teams. Uh, some of those players that we find really important to our special teams will probably get the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer. It's a reality of where we're at, and it's a good reality. Or any, is it any part of them looking at the opponent, or is it more? Like Could be some of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but not, probably not tomorrow. You know, not opposed. Again, I've mentioned this a few times. Eleven and seven on the road, um, but they're a deep team. Um, they're a really deep team. So it's just um, some of it will be opponent based going forward. What, 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 in this front, we've heard a lot about his shot. What are some of the other elements of his game that really stick to you, you that really excite you? Well, I give him credit. Even when we talked this summer, he wants to improve in some areas of those game wall play, his defensive play. Uh, as efficient as he was with his goal scoring, you know, there's still a reason he wasn't getting a lot of minutes on a playoff team in Seattle. So I think he wants to be committed to some of those things away from the puck, and he's he's, he's tried, and he's, he'll continue to improve on those. So obviously the shooting, but we want to be assertive with a shot. Uh, we would love for him to get out of each game with a ton of shot attempts, uh, but some of those other areas in this game also. With the, uh, I'm just curious, with the three goal assists when we talked about, I'm curious, obviously you, have, you said the back is, you know, but does it also give the luxury of in a night when you're not going to play Billy, you don't even have to dress him? Yeah, yeah. And there, the other thing, why we're still hanging around with three here, there's been very little separation. Probably really, you guys watch camp, there's been very little separation between the three of them, which is a positive. Uh, Alex, and James had really, really strong camps. Do you see all three of them getting games yep. this month? Or? Possibly, absolutely. Derek, what was your reaction to the league's decision to not allow Pride tape this year? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and that's a league decision. Obviously, that's out of my hands and above my pay skill or even uh, what I should even comment on. But I, I'm an all-inclusive guy. I've always been. Um, Probably a lot of credit to uh, my family, my upbringing. So um, I, I fully support the league mandates, but I'm I'm a person that believes in all inclusion, always have, and always will. What would your message be to I guess fans of the Red Wings from the community who feel disappointed by that decision? Yeah, I do, again, that's probably not my spot to say because some of these it comes down to. The individual at times, but again, I can't speak for the Red Wings. I don't want to speak for the Red Wings. I can speak for myself. 
and I've always been and always will be very proud, uh, all-inclusive person. You talked about uh, Sprong shot, having guys like Sprong and Dabrinkit, how, how nice is that, having guys that don't need to be told to, to shoot the puck, to have that mentality? Well, you hope you don't need to tell them. I mean, not, even those shooters, they go through moments uh, where they're not aggressive. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's you know a main date for us. We've already talked with through camp. Uh, we want volume. We want volume as a team a lot. And we didn't get a lot of that last year. Uh, so yeah, we the, I, we want those guys just pumping pucks on net when and where. Uh, you know, people look at shot percentage a lot, and it's real. I understand that, but. Sometimes getting that net, you get in those defensive battles, those shot scramble type battles. That can be an effective part of your game too. Is there anybody from uh, from last year uh, who you want to see also shoot the puck more? Yeah, I don't know specific. specific. I think on a whole, there's certain part times in our game. Um, you never want to take decision making skill out of high end guys, but sometimes just when you struggle, if you can just simplify your game, just getting pucks on net. I mean, just my past experience within this league you look at someone like carolina no matter what they're a volume shot team that's their identity everything goes to the net i experienced kind of, of all the talent and skill in the world colorado in the stanley cup finals you know people looked at this as a skilled highly offensive team three or four of the best players in the world they were simple everything went to the net and so I just think sometimes it's mentality and i don't know if it's so much on a whole or an individual, probably more on the whole, we want pucks to the net. Heading into the season, are there any team goals that you've set, or are you just taking it day by day? Day by day. I think the goals take care of themselves. Um, you know, I'd love to be where we were three quarters of the season last year. You know, we were seven, eight games over 500, and we were actually in the playoff line. But a lot needs to go into that. And again, it just it starts with. You know, we're on the outside looking in, in everyone's eyes. We should be, and we'll. But it's up to us again to close that gap and to change that perception. A couple of years ago, this team didn't have more than three or four right-hand shots on the roster. I'm just curious, like, is handedness something that, like, is it an underrated thing? Is it overblown? Like, what would it? How do you I, think, I think it's no. I think it's real. Now, it's it's it doesn't happen a lot. It's not a reality. I think, you know, as, as much talk and credit. Uh, people are giving Steve and what he did this summer, adding to our depth. And I think he had a purpose with it too, with a lot of the hands. I think it helps in a lot of situations. Ideally, you'd love all your hands to bounce out through, throughout your entire lineup. And so I do think it's real, um, and you know, hopefully, it helps us as a luxury this year. Does it help with the face-off stuff too? Yeah, face-off for sure. You want both dots. We lacked that dot last year. It's no mystery. I think we've talked about it a few times. Percentage-wise, every number shows you. Obviously, having a righty in there will help us in a lot of areas. When it comes to just face-offs in general, when you kind of look at the, the long-term effect of them, because it's something where a lot of times the stats for a game is 50-50, right? Like even yep. a good team is at 55 or 54% yes. or whatever. Where, like when, as a, from a coaching perspective, how do you judge good versus bad? In, 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 in well, there's the hard numbers, obviously, but I just think it sets up your whole game. Uh, even if we're not winning them, if you, if you watch us, if we're set on our toes, if we're forechecking off on winning or winning those battles on the line of scrimmage, if you will, I just think that's a team that's locked in. You know, you look at teams that go through flat in their game, and we're no different. A lot of times it starts with that approach mentality in the face off. Of course, you would love that world-class center, clean, snapping pucks clean. You can almost guarantee it's a win. I mean, you've watching the Pittsburgh game last night. They, they pulled the goalie early. There's no doubt in my mind they knew they were going to win that face-off because of Crosby. And, you know, you can plan around that. But it just, I think it just has to do with mentality and approach a little bit, face-offs. With, with, with face-offs, too, I'm just I'm watching the Pittsburgh Chicago game last night, and you see Doug Crosby talk about it's fitting Crosby would already take the face off, but it's one of those things where you see the experience. And I'm curious for young players, young centers in the face off that, like, what do you kind of see the learning curve for that? Experience, yeah. strength, uh, what's important in a face off dot. I mean, we had the experience last year with Marco Casper. Uh, I don't, I don't, he looked like Pedard in the face off dot last year. He didn't even have a chance against Tavares and those guys. But then you learn, you learn from experience and even uh, we had a young D, a young center take a face off in the preseason where they had an obvious shooter set up and he still tried to snap it back clean. And instead of maybe reading the play, little experience, maybe just a tie up's important here. 
Uh, they snapped it back clean, it was in the back of our net. So I just think there's some growth experience um, with that. It's, it's hard, and it, but it's very important, as you know, you've alluded to.